All right, so I just want to hop on and do a quick Bitcoin update. It is late, but I figured I'd do one anyway. Um, I want to go over Market Cipher, and I want to talk about this pump that we just had locally. So uh, if you watched my last video, I did uh, talk about you know the fact that we are in an uptrend and that you know we could potentially be looking for a higher low to be put in. And I did mark out this area in between the Golden Pocket and the 786. And I actually came up with two long ideas here. The first one, which was an SFP of this low into the Golden Pocket, did not work. I did not try and take that trade. Uh, the way that we came down to SFP that, I didn't like it. It was pretty much a straight shot down, even on the low time frames. Uh, so that was certainly pretty sketchy. Um, so I didn't take that trade. I did try and take a few longs in here. And unfortunately, I uh, got stopped out of both of them for a loss. I actually only had one winning trade in this range here, and it was a short, which uh, does kind of super suck because that would have been a very good long trade. And I did you know, choose the right area of interest to look for those confirmations. We did see bullish divergences as uh, we put in that last low. You can see uh, momentum divs there. And there were even some you know, local money flow divs as we came down to put in that last low. Not like great looking ones because uh, from here to here, money flow put in a lower low. But as price started approaching that low to take it out locally, we did see money flow start to move to the upside. Divergences on the five minute. So there were confirmations in that area, and that zone did hold for a very aggressive push to the upside. We have now uh, put in a new higher high in the uh, higher time frame trend, and clearly this short idea did not work. I told you I wasn't really feeling this. Um, you know, I wanted to plan it out anyway, just in case there was some kind of good confirmations there. But uh, looking, you know, at least right now, it does not seem like there was any confirmations at all. Money flow was looking very bullish as we approached that high. Momentum putting in higher highs, so there was no confirmation there. Um, and yeah, I did not take that short. And at this point, I will say I think it is uh, pretty likely that, you know, even if we continue to see retraces after these pumps, I think there's a good chance we continue working our way to the upside to some of these more key areas of resistance above us. We have already gotten above the golden pocket of uh, that pull from all time high down to the range low. So we broke above that. Um, it doesn't look like there's much resistance in this zone uh, between this red box up here and uh, you know the previous range high. So I would be pretty surprised if price ended up finding a significant top somewhere in this void. Like if this ends up being a significant top and we like break structure and start like reversing, maybe even falling down below value area low, that would kind of surprise me a bit. I think it's more likely that if we are going to top out, it'll be at a more significant area. But with that being said, we did grab uh, some liquidity with that last push to the upside we took out this high over here there's still you know a few lower highs above us uh, even above this zone right here which is the point of control of the larger range with some other confluence you know there are some lower highs above that there's still liquidity above us and pulling this fixed range back up uh, we did also run into a high volume node uh, so looking at the volume over here it's kind of hard to see i can actually change the color of this uh, to make it a bit more visible but yeah you can see this high volume node right here right above the golden pocket we did hit off that we wicked it out on the daily time frame so far uh so you know there is that there is also another high volume node right above where we just stopped out we front ran this one and of course the point of control is still up here as well but all in all i don't think we really uh topped out in that significant of an area especially since we got above the golden pocket now, looking at it on the daily, we did wick out the uh, 0.65, so you could maybe make the argument that this is still holding the golden pocket as resistance, but I do still think that the juicier looking zone of resistance is up here around that point of control. So pretty much all of my short ideas are still the same. I'm still watching these zones. I'm still looking for confirmations. And if you watched my last video, you'll know that I like this idea more. I think this idea is a bit more sketchy. And um, while well, I went over... The reason for this but i think i need to see a local setup one where i can de-risk this trade if i do end up taking this short uh prior to us coming back down to hit the point of control uh because if we get above it then you know there's a chance that access support even if we reject from this area so i really need to see some kind of a local setup at this zone if i'm going to take a trade and uh you know same pretty much applies with this one i would rather have like a good looking setup on the lower time frames so my short ideas are still the same and as for my long ideas um i am Still potentially looking at this idea, if you uh, go to the daily time frame, I think we could definitely retrace to this area and still you know, maintain 
this bullish structure we did just break structure on the daily time frame so we could retrace to put in a higher low so i still think this idea is valid given that there are confirmations in this zone but this more local uh long idea this one right here which was basically coming back down to test the macro value area low for support once again um, i think that has changed a little bit just because we put in a new higher high i think um rather than us you know getting a move all the way down and uh, taking out these lows over here and then reclaiming the value area i think you know we could still do that we could see a wick all the way down there and then see it reclaimed but um, i would also be looking at this low now being a higher low and i think we would have to reclaim that as well so honestly i think it'd be a better idea if we just sfp this low and uh, maybe you know just bounce off of the value area low get some kind of confirmation in here i think i would rather see that so uh, for this one i am going to adjust the idea and you know i still may consider it if there's confirmations um if we you know get a very deep sfp but i think i would rather this one so i'm going to uh, change the stop loss to basically go you know loosely below the value area low so yeah i am going to modify that idea a little bit and i do also want to look for some local long ideas for if we retrace and put in yet another higher low in this lower time frame trend and this one is a bit more tricky you know we kind of just had a straight up move here so if we start retracing we could you know give back that whole uh move um you know it's kind of like inefficiencies all the way up but uh you know you could look at a few different ideas here i think looking in between the value area high and the point of control of this previous range this area could end up holding as support um you could also look towards the lower end of the range maybe filling this inefficiency here Really, I'm just going to be watching for confirmations. Um, I'm not really too worried about where we bottom out. I'm more so worried about where are we going to get confirmations. And uh, there is, you know, anchored VWAP confluence coming in around the value area high right now. So maybe it would be better if we kind of retest and hold the value area high or the point of control as support. So uh, if I am going to put a position up on the screen, I would probably do something like this for now. But again, um, it really comes down to if and where we see the confirmations. And, uh, you know, I could potentially be targeting all the way up to the point of control with this long. And uh, just to kind of identify that zone right there, I'll put a box around uh, loosely where the anchored view is going to be all the way down to the point of control. And uh, that is pretty much it. That's my adjusted plans at this point. Um, I will also be looking to scalp the local price action in case we don't see that big of a retrace. Maybe we end up ranging here. Maybe there's some trades to be had locally, but I'm not going to go through and mark anything out there. So now last thing, let's go over market cipher. So on the weekly time frame, we do have a green dot down here. Uh, right now, this is looking like a pretty nice trigger wave. VWAP came up very aggressively, and this is still unconfirmed. We still have uh, two days until the weekly candle closes. And I do think if this trigger wave ends up confirming, and if we start seeing uh, weekly momentum get back above the zero line, and especially if the lower time frames start agreeing with the weekly uh, pointing to bullishness, then I think this you know could be a pretty bullish thing. We may see um, you know not just a move a little bit higher, but maybe we get a move all the way up to test all time high from this. But let's take a look at the lower time frames, see if they're agreeing with that idea. Now the daily time frame is a bit interesting here. We're actually seeing the money flow start to take a turn to the downside. Uh, this is not looking as bullish as I would expect it to, just given how. Uh, bullish this move has been also given the fact that we did see some bullish confirmations on the low on the daily time frame we saw some bullish divs here with momentum and money flow both putting in higher lows as price put in a lower low and momentum has gotten a pretty aggressive move to the upside but money flow is not really following along with it this is very interesting to me especially since it's starting to curve over uh, to the downside at the moment and we are seeing the uh, you know VWAP get pretty close to the zero line. It got an aggressive move down. Potentially, this momentum wave is looking to top out soon. It is putting up a little bit of a fight right now. It is turning away from the zero line a little bit. So this you know could give the momentum another push to the upside if it starts turning back to the upside. Maybe then that is when we see this money flow start to uh, follow momentum. But at this point, it is certainly looking a little strange, and it's not backing up the weekly time frame as much as I would like it to. And on the 4-hour, we actually see some bearish divergences as we just put in a higher high. So we see momentum and money flow putting in lower highs. Uh, money flow still overall is bullish. I mean, it's pretty thick in the green. 
The fact that we did see some divergences, though, is a little worrying, I would say. And uh, this momentum is certainly a little worrying as well. This uh, maybe makes me think that the local long idea that I was looking at might not be such a good idea. Uh, it could still work, especially if there's lower time frame confirmations. But, you know, this uh, could certainly be at least a uh, local top. And maybe we see a larger retracement, maybe down to value area low, maybe even deeper. Just given the bear div potential here. Now, we haven't seen the four hour top out yet. It does look like it's getting pretty close, though. VWAP is uh, pretty close to the zero line. This momentum wave is starting to clip off a little bit. So let's check the time frames below it, see if they are also diverging. Um, in the three hour, there is right now technically a slight money flow div. It is uh, not looking that strong, honestly, because locally money flow is moving to the upside, but the momentum divergence is pretty clear. And this is closer to topping out in terms of this momentum wave. So it is closer to confirming this divergence. The two hour just recently printed a red dot and the money flow div on this time frame is much more clear. And on the one hour, there is also a slight momentum div here. Uh, this momentum wave did get pretty high up there. It got above the 60 line, but it did diverge slightly from this wave. And with money flow, there is a very clear divergence. Now we have to keep in mind that this is a very aggressive bullish trend. And oftentimes you will see divergences just ignored. I would not be surprised if we do, you know, still see a higher low put in even after a very shallow retrace just because we're in a very strong uptrend. And uh, Bitcoin likes to ignore divergences when we're in that kind of situation, especially when we haven't hit a key level, when there's still key resistance above us. But that is certainly something to pay attention to. Uh, we are definitely diverging on the four hour through the one hour. And the daily money flow is also turning to the downside, which kind of uh, backs up the uh, weakness and the bullishness, I would say. So that is really about it. I will uh, try to clean this up a little bit to make it a little less crowded. But yeah, these are basically uh, my plans at the moment. That's what I'm thinking. And the last thing I'll say before I get out of here, make sure you guys tune in to the Mike Perry, Jake Paul fight tomorrow. Mike Perry is going to beat Jake Paul, ideally by knockout, but at worst, it will be a decision win for my boy Mike Perry. And I'm pretty sure uh, tomorrow is going to be the last day that you can use this code for 25% off Market Cipher. And if you do decide to use this code to purchase Market Cipher, I would appreciate if you used my referral link, which is in the description of all of my videos. Just click on that Market Cipher link. It will take you to the website. And you should also be able to use this code to get 25% off. All right, that is it for this video. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like, subscribing, and leaving a comment. I appreciate all of the support on my channel, and I will see you all in the next one.